It's mailbag and predictions Friday here at the Locked On Nebraska podcast. We ride. You are Locked On Nebraska, your daily Nebraska Cornhuskers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Nebraska your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Okay, good morning. It is Friday morning, Friday the 13th. I'm Mitch Sherman oh, from wow. The Athletic, Connor Happer of 1620 The Zone is with me we've got a full show today with lots of mailbag questions we'll have our predictions about the nebraska northern iowa game and a run around the big 10 and games nationally they start tonight we will get to that in the third segment but let's just get right into it um lots of questions thank you very much for all the questions that came in the email is starting to light up i like it we love locked on neb at gmail.com man it was full full of questions when i opened that thing up yesterday and we got them on youtube too so we are going to get started here. First question of the show comes from Joshua on YouTube. He asks us, what factor will be most important for Nebraska to remain undefeated heading into the Ohio State game? Will it be the offensive line or the secondary? I think those are just suggestions from Joshua because he adds in that he believes it will be the front seven on defense. Love the show. Thanks, Joshua. Yeah, I think there's like... um yeah, like you have to go in with what you've already seen. And uh, the bottom line for me is I just like, I trust Nebraska's defense. So I think what we're talking about here is the biggest variable, right? If he's at the biggest factor. Yeah, um, it's unclear. If, if for what, if for whatever reason, like if, if Nebraska's defense, their front seven, like unexpectedly falls apart, obviously that would be a huge factor, but I don't, I don't see that happening. So I'll just take them out of it. I think the offensive line is a really good place to start. Um, you, you you go with the run game. Um, if Nebraska can get that established and stay on schedule in the run game, um, that would be the best thing for its offense, its quarterback, um, and you know its defense, obviously, as well. So I'll go with that. Yeah, so I'm going to take it a different direction and say the wide receivers because uh, we've seen up and down play from the wide receivers in the first two weeks. And Dylan Raiola is such a wild card for this Nebraska team. He's the difference for in Nebraska between 2023 and 2024, along with other things. But he's he's the primary difference if you're stacking these teams next to each other. And for him to work most effectively, those wide receivers need to be on their game. They need to be helping him out. They need to be catching passes. They've got to be helping on the perimeter. Maybe we've made too much out of the perimeter blocking this week. Matt Rule thinks we have, according to his – his uh, his comments on Thursday, but um, hey, it is what it is. They talked about it. Sat talked about it. Rule talked about it. So um, those receivers have got to have got to step it up and do their job. I think they they are the biggest factor if we're looking for something like where Nebraska needs to find a way to up the level of play. Um, next question. This one comes on email from Joshua. Different Joshua. We're starting the show with two Joshuas. Wow. How about Any that? Of Yes. Do any of the new that could have been planned? Do any of the numerous comments from Matt Rule saying that he won't be coaching at Nebraska in the future raise any concerns? It makes me nervous, says Joshua. In my opinion, he's the best coach and leader at the school since Tom Osborne. I would just, I, I would, I would sit back, enjoy the ride. Um, I, I would probably stop being. I don't want to tell you how to feel, but I would stop being worried about this. Um, not that he's not going to get up and leave at some point. Uh, I don't think it's going to be any time in the near future. Um, certainly in the next, uh, let's say, two years while Dylan Raiola is still on campus. Um, like, that's not happening. And, you know, when it comes down to it, Nebraska has, um, like, the ability to to give him what he wants in terms of the support. And, obviously, he's found a, a home here. He enjoys it. Obviously, they can win here as well. So I don't like, of course, something could happen at any given time. I don't know what he's going to want in, in five years, but I just, I wouldn't be concerned about it now. If they, if, if that's happening, then Nebraska is probably having a whole bunch of success. Um, so I, it's, it's not something that's on the front of my mind at all. I don't think that he's leaving for another job. I don't think he's going to Penn state. Maybe people worry about that. I just don't see that happening. Um, I not going to happen. 
according to my beliefs. He's going to be 50 in January, so he's still young. I say that as someone who's the same age as Matt Rule. He's he's young. Uh, we're young. So <laughs> nobody's retiring anytime soon. Now, Matt could Rule could retire tomorrow if he wanted, and he has the, the, the contract uh, and the money that he's earned to do it. He also has a contract that's keeping him in a job because he's making – an average of like eight or nine million dollars a year for the next the next what seven years. Yeah. No, he's he's he likes it in Nebraska. His family likes it here. His wife is open to business. He's moved his parents into uh into the state. His son is a freshman in college at UNL. Like everything's everything's cool right now at this point. You saw him hanging out at North Omaha Northwest on on Thursday night watching watching the North and central game and throwing the football around with kids posing for photos. Like he's, he's having a good time. Um, yes. Joshua is right. He will not be coaching at Nebraska in the future. There will be a time when he's not <laughs> coaching at Nebraska. And he does talk about this. He says, someday I won't be the coach here. You know, you know, he said he acknowledges he's not going to coach the guys who are six, seven, eight years old playing youth football right now. Like when they get to college, that's 10 years from now, 10 to 12 years. Like he's not going to be here. At least that's not in his plans right now. So you're not going to have him for Tom Osborne 25 yeah. years, but that's what I think. Like it doesn't. That's not how it works anymore. Like yeah. <laughs> it's 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 just not. Guys aren't there for 30 years. So. I'm with you. Enjoy it. Enjoy it while you got it. It's 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 going to be. It's going to it's going to last a while. Um, question on YouTube from Heya DZ Mold. Uh, <laughs> whatever. That <laughs> I was is. wondering what you're going to do with that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. How do you feel about Dylan Raiola's clock pacing and management? Yeah, I think um, there was there was the one situation at the end of the first half, I guess, of the UTEP game, and they ended up it, or, or uh, the end of the first half of the Colorado game, I guess. Yeah. Um, and you know it 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 led to them getting another possession. Um, so I mean, the buffs. Yeah, I just don't. Um, like if he has all the quarterback stuff um, and, and you kind of trust him pretty implicitly, implicitly in a lot of situations, um, which I feel like they do already two games into his career. Um, you know, this is probably, this is probably pretty far down my list at the same time. It's important because Nebraska's defense is, is its core and they want to put them in the best positions possible. With that being said, they also trust them, right? So if they're put in bad spots, then it's not the worst thing in the world. Like, you know, for a second Colorado possession of the game, they take a kickback to like the 40 yard line and Nebraska gets a four and out, you know, so you can kind of trust them in those situations too. Bottom line is if they put them in bad positions, it doesn't have to be a score like it maybe has been in the past. Um, I, I guess it's, it's been a thing, but it hasn't bothered me. Maybe that's how I'll put it. If your quarterback scores too fast, that's okay. That's yeah. better than, than not scoring at all. And they've had two into the first half situations in two games and, and he's driven them down the field and scored on both of them. It was a little too fast, but there were some penalties involved uh, in the in the Colorado game. And Colorado, you know, if they if they're going to allow allow the yardage, it's it's there for you. The thing that I think is really comforting here for Nebraska, no matter who the quarterback and in college football, is I really believe this is where the helmet communication comes in and helps. Yeah, it's more difficult for a quarterback when they're looking to the sideline for signals and they don't have that voice in their head in the last two minutes of a half. So I really think that that Dylan has benefited from that in, in the first two weeks and will continue to. Um, it'll be interesting to see him in that spot when Nebraska is not up by multiple scores and they need a score at the end of a game um, in order to win or force overtime or or whatever, get closer. That's, I think, a bigger test than doing it at the end of the first half. All right, next question on email comes from Young Mustache. He says, in my opinion, your take talking to us on the, quote, emotional juice and everything else leading up to Colorado gets overblown. I'm curious to know what kind of weight you place on emotional juice compared to the X's and O's of just lining up and playing football. This is a great question. I'm actually, uh, I've been thinking about this a lot this week, and I was thinking about especially a lot after the video of Shiloh Sanders uh, saying we're going to, roll you guys before you know during the coin toss you know we're gonna roll you yeah yeah um and so i'll put it this way i think nebraska is a better football team than colorado was a better football team than colorado and would have beaten them you know like straight up x's and o's like young mustache is talking about i think nebraska would have taken care of business in that scenario because i just think they're top to bottom better 
But I don't know, like, I don't know what you're watching if you don't think the emotional edge had a factor in that game. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I, it killed them right out of the right out of the gate. Um, th- that was what won them the game so early. Like I said, I think Nebraska wins it. Um, so I think in the specific instance of that game, the emotional part of it was uh, massively important. I mean, they got they got a three and out and a, a touchdown and a three and, or you know and a pick six and a three and out. Like I mean, it just it just snowballed on itself. Colorado very very clearly was not ready for what they got from an emotional standpoint from Nebraska and Nebraska's fans on Saturday night. And it won in the football game within the first 15 minutes. So I thought it was a huge thing. Um, but I think Nebraska's better anyway, if that makes sense. I'll give a quick answer on this before we get to a break. The entire Nebraska produced documentary that came out the week after the Colorado game was about the emotional juice that went into winning that game. So from an internal standpoint, it meant everything. Would Nebraska will win games and will have to win games because of X's and O's and more than X's and O's, just the talent, the Jimmys and the Joes. Um, are more important than the X's and the O's sometimes. Nebraska hopes to be good at both of those things moving forward. So this was a unique situation against Colorado where the emotional juice was was such a factor. All right, coming up after the break, we've got a question, and we will answer this question about one listener's view on the Nebraska coordinators who he believes are thoroughly mediocre, and he's not talking about Tony White in this conversation. (laughs) That is coming up next um after this word passion drive and patience the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive and we're talking about ebay motors they have everything for you to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance we're talking superchargers roof racks exhaust kits led headlights and more so whether you're into speed power or style ebay motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with that eBay guaranteed fit, you, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. All right, I want to tell you also about LinkedIn. When you are hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals who are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. It has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team, fast and for free. LinkedIn is not just a job board. It helps you hire pros who you can't find anywhere else, even those who are not actively searching for a new job. In a given month, More than 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. 86% of small businesses on LinkedIn get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. So hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. All right, welcome back. Connor Happer, Mitch Sherman with you here. Uh, we'll try and go a little bit more rapid fire here in this segment so we can make some space for our picks in the final one. Um, back to a question about the Colorado game. This one is from Brandon. Uh, he wonders if last week was the last time we'll see Nebraska and Colorado play. If so, isn't this the counter in uh, to the way in, in which network television increasingly runs college football. NBC is going to want that kind of viewership, of course, going forward, which was the second most watched game of the week last week. Mitch, your response. Is this the last time we'll see Nebraska and see you? They'll play again someday, but I don't think Nebraska is going to be in a hurry to schedule non-conference matchups, home and homes against big 12 teams. um, Just because, uh, they're in wait and see mode on that right now. Troy Dannon wants to see how the 12 team college football playoff committee looks at strength of schedule. He wants to see when the SEC, um, the other major um, power in the sport of college football, is going to get on the same page as the Big Ten and schedule nine uh, conference games. So until those things are are kind of fleshed out, um, they're kind of in a wait and see mode. And uh, I think down the road, yes, games like this will return. Will it be Colorado? It might be a while, but I think right. it'll happen again. Well, to the TV point, next time this comes on the schedule, which won't be another for at least another decade or two um, at the very earliest, 
you know, a certain somebody who brings a lot of viewers will not be there. So I don't know if this oh, is a you don't TV think so. event. No, in fact, I don't think he'll be there um, in 365 days either. But uh, that's another conversation. Uh, coming up, we have uh, Zachary. Here's the question about the coordinators. Um, he he calls Nebraska's coordinators thoroughly mediocre um, on offense and special teams. He says when rule coached at Baylor and Temple, he didn't get his choice of the best coaches, and now those loyal assistants are being rewarded. Now that rule has resources, shouldn't he upgrade his staff? Take a look at a guy like Tony White. Marcus Satterfield and Ed Foley have never come close to matching his production and obviously Zachary is uh, uh, not completely sold on this group yet either. Mitch, your, your response to that? Well, I would say that rule has upgraded his staff. I mean, one, he hired Tony white Two, look at the, the, the hires he made this off season and getting Glenn Thomas and John Butler from the NFL. Um, he is going to be a patient person and he is someone who rewards loyalty. Ed Foley and Marcus Satterfield, Yes, have been with him since his time at Temple. Um, is their track record the same as Tony White? No. And Tony White is a head coach in waiting. Like he will probably be a head coach next year. But part of the reason you, you have to take, I think, the whole package with 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 Matt Rule. And part of what he's going to do is he's going to have his guys. Like there are coaches who are too loyal, loyal to a fault, who only want to hire their friends, and there are coaches who are just looking for the next the next guy and always yeah. going to hire the coach who is best suited to win right now. Like Nick Saban in his years at Alabama, that's what he did. Matt Rule is a combination of those things, and it works best for him. So if you want Matt Rule, that's what you're going to get. A uh, couple things here. First of all, when Tony White leaves to take a head coaching job after this year, um, we'll see who he hires, and we'll see how good the defense is still um, going forward at Nebraska. And the other thing is, generally, people love to play college football, a coordinator fantasy football with this all the time. Um, you need you need a coordinator that fits what you do, that makes you play, you know, complimentary football, and um, that you don't have to have this like tussle with all the time about how much to run or throw the ball, right? A guy that you could trust, and and so that's what coaches like to do, regardless or not uh, of if the guys produce the number one offense in the country a lot. So yeah, yeah. I think that's, that'd be my response. Uh, one more. Well, let's get to two more. Actually, this one is from Mitch in grand Island. Wonder why this made it Mitch. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> is this the week that we'll see Daniel Kalen? I can give you a very short answer on this. Yes, I believe so. It is. I think he gets in in the second half. I think they're going to, um, they want to get him, get him a game. Um, perfect opponent seemingly to do it against. And yep. I think it happens. It would make a lot of sense. That's for sure. Well, I, I, I agree with you completely. And finally, Alex emails in to locked on NEB at gmail.com uh, through the first two weeks of the season, which upcoming game looks like more of a challenge Rutgers or Indiana? Who you more afraid of? Who um, I'm interested to see Indiana on Saturday against UCLA in the Rose bowl. It'll tell us a little bit more about the Hoosiers. I, Rutgers is more of a known commodity to me. I mean, Greg Schiano. Like you know what you need to know about him. His teams are going to be tough, hard nosed, physical. Yeah, they're coming into Memorial Stadium where Nebraska has to go to Bloomington. But uh, I'm more, I'm thinking Rutgers is more of a challenge at this moment than Indiana. I think Rutgers is a really good team, um, but there are things about Indiana that are, I mean, like you said, the unknown co commodity part is important here. Now they'll have to they'll go watch James James Madison stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't. Like I actually think Nebraska matches up better against teams who are a little less dynamic on offense, um, and Rutgers fits that bill. Now they have a really good defense, um, you know, and a and a really good running back. But I don't know Indiana. The 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 theory of the unknown probably puts me over the edge, and that's a road game. So I, I think you throw that into that equation as well. Okay, we appreciate you guys. Thanks. Uh, this has been fun. We'll continue to do this on. On Fridays, you can email the show, lockdownneb at gmail.com. Leave your YouTube comments, like and subscribe to the show. As always, we appreciate that. Coming up next, our picks for the weekend, the Nebraska game, and in college football coming up.
All right, warm and sunny days are still here, so fuel up with Factors No Prep Mess No Prep Meals. You can meet your wellness goals with a menu of chef-crafted meals that include options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Factors Fresh Never Frozen Meals are dietitian approved. They're ready to eat in two minutes, so no matter how busy you are, you'll have time to enjoy nutritious, great-tasting meals from Factor. What are you waiting for? Do it today. With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you'll find new flavors to explore. So make your day delicious from breakfast all the way to dessert. Just stay fueled. It's effortless. There's energy there for you to support your lifestyle. Choose from six menu preferences. Head to factormeals.com slash college 50 Use the code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. Check it out at factormeals.com slash locked on 50. All right. Let's also talk about our guys from home field, man. You need to gear up for this, especially now that Nebraska is, you know, maybe coming back. You are going to want to show off that Nebraska pride. So home field is the place for you. And I got the perfect thing for you. The can't miss kickoff campaign, which is all about getting ready and showing off your school pride. Home field is a premium collegiate apparel brand. They're based in Indianapolis. They are made. It is made by college football sickos for college football sickos. That's the way I always put it to people focused on creating comfortable, officially licensed apparel. A lot of it is vintage throwback stuff. They are so cool stuff that you can't find anywhere else. And the can't miss kickoff campaign is the thing that you're watching right now. Everything a fan needs for football season. We're talking the football boxes, the coaches jackets, the bomber jackets. You look on their social media pages, and they are so, so cool. Check out their website, of course, as well. The football box, something that you're going to want. It contains three never-before-seen Nebraska items, not available anywhere else, and we're talking about gear that'll keep you warm or cool the entire season. Platinum VIP boxes, um, which have a new hat that's in there, the VIP koozie, and the 2024 Platinum Pass that guarantees 20% off and early access so you get in before those boxes will sell out. Homefield, it is awesome stuff, and uh, we're just hu- huge fans of what they're doing. It's comfortable, and it's unique, like I said before. So you're going to want to get in on this action, homefieldapparel.com, and when you use the code GBR24, you're going to get 15% off at checkout. Homefieldapparel.com, GBR24 is your code. Thank you for supporting us here at the Lockdown Nebraska podcast, and appreciate Homefield supporting us as well. Check out all the Lockdown Nebraska apparel and special items, homefieldapparel.com. Final segment on this Friday of week three before Nebraska brings Northern Iowa into Memorial Stadium. Connor, I've got my notebook here. I'm going to go back and look at the predictions and projections that we made Ooh. in week two. Whoa, oh, 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 this is not <laughs> this is not good. So I'll start, start with the good, I'll start it's with fun. the good news um, in the Nebraska props and picks out of six, seven that we made, six that we made. I got three right. You got two right. Um, That's not, not terrible. And and we were both we were both correct in picking that Nebraska would cover the spread against the Buffs. Um, in the other games that involve teams around the Big Ten and around the country, I went one and seven. <laughs> oh. One and seven against the spread. Oh, oh for zero oh and four in the Big Ten. I picked oh. Michigan, Iowa, Kansas, Oregon. Boom, zero oh and four. All right, you went three and five. So for the year, I've got eight picks correct on Nebraska. You've got five. We're both one and one with the Huskers against the spread. We're both six, nine, and one with other teams against the spread. Okay. That's a review. I would say that means do not take our advice to the betting window. Hey, but we're playing against each other. That's what this is all about. Right. It's a, it's a tight, yeah. it's a tight battle. Okay. All right. So we're going to start with Nebraska picks here against the Panthers of Northern Iowa. Over unders to begin with, Dylan Rayola. I have set the number at 225.5 passing yards. I think conventional wisdom would lead you to an under here. Um, but I'm going to take the over. I you know, like it's going to be in that range. I do think it's a good number, but maybe this is the day where Nebraska hits a couple big ones and that number floats over. I do not think that Dylan Raiola will be playing the entire game. Um, so he'll have to, he'll have to do this in a, probably about two and a half or three quarters. Yeah. That's my thought is that he's coming out early. So um, I think they're going to obviously try to keep him healthy this week, lean on that run game. Um, so I have the under you and I, 
pass yards. I have set this just below the Panthers' season average. It's at 105.5. They have been a disaster in the past game. Um, if they're if they're not running the ball, they're in big trouble. That is an astronomically low number, but <laughs> I think it's under. I I, I I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take the under still because they haven't proven that they can pass the ball against St. Thomas and Valparaiso. Um, and I think if they get down in this game, they'll probably just sit on it, right? It's not like they're going to be throwing it up and down the field trying to, like, they'll run themselves out of the building doing that. So I, I, I will, I'll take the under here, and I think Nebraska probably gets a couple interceptions as a result. I could see some picks. I like the fact that we're disagreeing on both of these things. I think they're going to have to throw it. Um, I don't think they can kind of come out and run for the, the yardage, anywhere near the yardage against no. the Nebraska defensive line that Valparaiso and, and St. Oh, Thomas have it's allowed. It's going to get ugly then, Mitch. Um, so, yeah, I think they're going to have to try to throw it, and they'll hit a pass or two. 105.5, I'm taking the over on that. Uh, Nebraska turnover margin. I've set it again at plus 0 0.5. Both weeks of the season, Nebraska has finished over that. Um, on the plus side of the turnover margin. Um, where do they go this week? We're going over again. Um, you know, it's 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 at least plus one for me. I think they probably grab a couple, like you said. They may they might have to throw it around a little bit. And if so, that's that's very dangerous. Their quarterback is no bueno. Sorry. Yep, I agree. I got him over. Nebraska penalties. So they have 15 penalties through two games. We're setting the over under at seven and a half the season average in this game will Nebraska go over or under its season average in penalties this week. This better be cleaner. I'm just going to will try and will this into existence and say under seven and a half penalties. Okay. I agree. So two that we agree on two that we disagree on a couple more here on the Nebraska props leading rusher, his name for Nebraska. What will it be here in week three? Uh, let's go off the board. Let's go. Uh, let's go Emmett Johnson this week. Oh. Um, you know, I think you're, you're, Starter is Dante Dowdell, um, but there's going to be a lot of time for other people to get some yards in this one. Let's go EJ. Got his brother from another mother, Ramir Johnson, um, <laughs> as the leading rusher this week. He uh, is part of that two-man group with Dante Dowdell, who has taken the the lead in the Nebraska running back room. So I think Ramir breaks a big one this week and, and goes over 100 yards first uh, for the first uh, time this season by a Nebraska back. Leading receiver in terms of yardage this week. You could go a lot of different places here. Um, and if I wanted to take something, somebody uh, somebody off the board would be somebody that's not Jamal Banks or Isaiah Nair. And mm -hmm. I'll do that. Let's say Ja'Cory Barney takes a big one. Um, and, you know, he goes pick. he goes like 80 or something like that on a on a sweep. And so let, let's take Barney. Okay. I've got Jalen Lloyd. Uh, Jalen Lloyd dropped one last week that would have been a big play in the first half, made up for it by coming back and, and getting a big reception. Uh, in the on a scoring drive against the Buffs, I have Lloyd, the Omaha guy, coming through as Nebraska's leading receiver in terms of yardage. Uh, first touchdown by Nebraska. It's like a Super Bowl prop here. Yeah, Dante Dowdell, four yards, touchdown. Four yards to the end zone. I have Thomas Fedoni. Mm. Um, I'm just like continuing to think that the tight ends are going to find their way into the game plan. I think it happens this week. All right, last one. Um, Nebraska's sack leader. So if as long as Nebraska gets one sack, this is a valid question. If there's multiple players with one sack or two sacks, then you get credit for anybody who's uh, tied for the lead. Okay. Um, let's go. Let's go Cam Lenhart this week. All right. I don't yeah. know why they're, they're, they're all just as likely to get sacks as the other guys, I think. So let's, let's take Cam. Well, we know that Northern Iowa is not likely to throw the ball a ton, uh, so there won't be a, a tremendous amount of opportunities. I believe the Panthers have given up two sacks this season in two games. I'm going Nash Hutmaker. Um, I think he breaks through and and gets one, uh, maybe one and a half. In the middle. Yeah, right. That's my choice. Okay, the uh, the line for Nebraska and Northern Iowa is Huskers favored by 32 and a half. I'll give you my prediction first since you've been going first on all this other stuff. I have Nebraska win in this game 35 to 7. Um, so no cover for the Huskers. Wow. Uh, I do think Nebraska covers at 32 and a half. And as I said earlier in the week on this very show, I think Nebraska allows zero points, 48 to zero. Nebraska wins. Bam. Oh, okay. That is a bolt. You, that is, it's a blowout. Yeah. Yeah. It's ugly. Okay. All let's right. Well, the, one uh, of us is going to be right. Let's go to the, uh, games around college football. Uh, 
a pretty a pretty light slate, but some ones that we're watching here. Uh, Alabama goes to Camp Randall. Alabama is a 16 and a half point favorite after going. Uh, they had a four quarter game last week with South Florida. Wisconsin has looked very shaky to start the season. This is uh, big noon Fox tomorrow. Bama by more than two touchdowns. Mitch, who you got? Yeah, as, as I heard it described this week, Bama played with its food against South Florida. Um, probably doesn't want to do that on the road at Camp Randall. I know Camp Randall hasn't uh, hasn't been, uh, you know, a, a uh, it hasn't been too energetic through two games for Ooh. the Badgers. I think they get it going this week, and Camp Randall will be will be jumping. They'll be jumping around. Um, and I got I've got uh, Wisconsin to cover, lose the game, but cover the sixteen and a half. I just don't think they can hang in that long. So give me give me Alabama to cover the 16 and a half, even though it's not really a comfortable number for me. I just, you know, I think it's going to be a pretty good gap throughout and then Bama is able to finish it at the end. Uh, Notre Dame, who's coming off the loss to Northern Illinois, is going to Purdue, who's coming off the bye. This is a 230 game. Wow, is this? Is this? Yeah, this is on CBS, I guess. Uh, Notre Dame mm-hmm. is a nine and a half point favorite. Make sure you got. I have Notre Dame. Um, I think that uh, there's some there's some belief, a little bit of belief around Purdue. The game that Hudson Card had in the Boilers opener, he was 24 25 yeah. passing. Notre Dame uh, gets well on the road in state against Purdue and covers the nine and a half. I am interested in Purdue. I want to see what that looks like, um, but yeah, I do think it's a bounce back spot for Notre Dame as well. Give me the Irish. Uh, Iowa is looking for a bounce back spot. They are hosting Troy this weekend at Kinnick Stadium, three o'clock on FS1. I think this number's huge. Twenty two and a half uh, is the the number set for. Can Iowa score twenty two and a half? I mean, if they can score twenty three, then I guess maybe they cover because you can shut out Troy. Troy's zero and two, but they're probably a pretty good zero and two, uh, and they're going to have some athletes I think that match up well against Iowa. I think Troy scores ten to thirteen points in this game. Iowa probably in the in the 24 to 27 range. So I believe Troy will cover and Iowa wins. I like your math on that. And I, I actually agree with you. Um, I don't don't trust what you've seen from that that first week of Iowa offensively. It's it's still kind of a tire fire over there. But give me Troy to cover on the road at Kinnick. Uh, one more Big Ten game and then we'll go quickly through our national games. Indiana is at UCLA. This is a Big Ten on Big Ten game. Indiana is a three and a half point favorite, 630 NBC in the Rose Bowl on Saturday night. Yeah, I wish I could sit down and watch this one and I wasn't going to be watching the uh, the game in front of me at that time. Um, we wish it was in the 230 slot, but it's 630 on the West Coast. I like UCLA. Uh, I think wow. that there's some hype around Indiana right now. I, I understand you got the first year coach. UCLA's played just the one game. Didn't look great, but... Um, a little too too much too soon for for Indiana. In fact, I think UCLA wins this game as a as a home dog. Yeah, I, I'm going to say I'll, I'll take Indiana here, but it's not because of Indiana. It's more because of UCLA and what mm-hmm. I don't think they are. So I'll, I'll take I'll take the Hoosiers on the road to cover a three and a half, even though that is a bit of a scary number. Um, going all the way out there. Okay, four national games before we get out of here. Thanks for listening. Appreciate you guys. By the way, tonight we have a good one. It's not a Big 12 game, but it is. Arizona at Kansas State. <laughs> <laughs> the Wildcats yes, are a half-point favorite on Big Fox uh, tonight. Once again, this does not count in conference standings, but they are in the same conference. Is, is that three, right? Three, is that three. right? That is correct. The, Gosh, this, I didn't know that. It does not count in Big 12 standings. This is why, this is why, this is why we talk about this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've got Arizona. Um, I, like, I think uh, K-State wins the game, but does not get to, get to uh, six and a half. Give me K State by a touchdown. Six point win. Okay. Give me K right. State by a touchdown. Avery Johnson, um, uh, Arizona, trying to figure things out early, but they do have some good players. Noah Fafita, I think, is the quarterback's yes. name. Pretty good player. That's how you pronounce that. Yeah, and a touchdown and an extra point. So you've got the you've got the cats. Oh, they're just cats got, on cats. Cats yeah. on cats here. I got yeah. the 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 purple cats. The go power. Right. Yeah. Uh, Memphis is going to Florida State, and they are reeling. Uh, the Knolls are a six and a half point favorite tomorrow morning, eleven a.m. on ESPN. Knolls get their first win, and they get the cover. I actually agree with you here. Um, it, it just it just feels like too much to pile on them. You know, I almost feel bad. This is like a pity a, a pity play for me. You know, mm-hmm. shout out to the Knolls. Uh, two more. Boston College is number twenty four in the country after beating the aforementioned Florida State. They go to Missouri, who's number six in the country. 
This game is so weird. It's at 11.45 on the SEC Network. Missouri is 16.5-point favorite. Yeah, I like Boston College. Missouri's going to win this game handily by 14 points, uh, but uh, Missouri's very good, uh, and, and I think sometimes we, we tend to lose sight of that here. Uh, the old Big 8 and Big 12 mate of the Huskers is is uh, very much a college football playoff contender. Missouri wins this. Boston College uh, covers. I'm going to lay the 16 and a half here. I think uh, Boston College is a little too juiced after, like, you know, just in a betting market sense uh, after their win against Florida State. So give me Missouri to cover the 16 and a half at home at uh, Fro Field. And maybe some interest here locally. Colorado is a seven and a half point favorite at Colorado state. These are on, this is on campus. This is in Fort Collins, six 30 tomorrow on CBS. Mitch does Colorado bounce back after their emotional loss to Nebraska. Well, I can see Colorado winning this game, but they're not going to win it by seven and a half. I think the, the Rams cover. I like, I will take Jay Norvell and the Colorado state team plus seven and a half. I think the Rams win the football game and send Colorado into complete and utter disarray. Meltdown. Meltdown I don't mode. think Colorado being physically beat up from what they experience in Lincoln is a True. factor here. Um, so I'll, I'll take the Rams to win the game outright, but definitely cover. Um, and that's it for this week. We'll keep track. Hopefully we do better than we have in the past. Appreciate you guys listening all week. Um, and uh, we'll be back potentially for a recap, but probably more likely on Monday after a win against Northern Iowa. Thanks for making Locked On Nebraska your first listen today. Now go check out the Locked On College Football Podcast where Spencer has you covered. You can check it out in the description to this show. That's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.